goodness, with face, pat, and tiz. Um, yeah, man, uh, since face is not here this week, it looks like it's a little early. Don't get me wrong, it's a little bit early. Mm-hmm. But it looks like it's that time, man. I, I, I'm maybe my, my my I just had a little ding go off on my phone. Pause. I, I mm-hmm. believe it's that time, brother. Well, let's not time. waste time. Let's not waste any more time. Episode forty-two. You know what it's time for? The good and fuck Ray. Yeah. I'm gonna make a sound of good and fuck Ray. <laughs> We're in the bad lip. <laughs> All right. So I think I'm going to start off the good and fuckery with a random segment within the good and fuckery. Right I'm on. I'm going to call this my song of the week. This is the song I've been jamming for for a good week now. And uh, yeah, it stayed in rotation and I have not got tired of it. Um, so I don't know if y'all know about it, but um, there's this song with, um, with an artist named Baby King. And it's featuring uh, Kendrick Lamar. And it's called Family, Family Ties. Ties. Yeah, mm-hmm. yep, 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 yep. I'm familiar. And when I tell you, when I get hit with it, and then I saw the video and everything, it's like, yes. He's this, touching your this heart. Is, this, this is what's been missing for a good minute. I haven't got this energy. There's some high-level penmanship on there, I'll tell you that. Some, got, some, got some energy in this stuff. And I like... I'm like, um, you know, Baby King, he's been on a low. I've been listening to his music on a low, and this he got a couple of tracks out there. I haven't heard a song yet from him that I haven't, you know, not liked, or you know what I'm saying. But um, man, one thing I had my pause breath control as far as his raps, mm. like just going in the whole time on on and then going into a new flow as the beat drop or whatever and i don't know how his process is but the way like sometimes you can kind of see you can kind of hear if you got an ear for it when a rapper punches in but like i could see points where he could have punched in but it don't sound like it now it could be kudos to the engineer or whatever but awesome performance all the way through and then I mean, it's a storyline behind it. It just goes into Kendrick's part at the end. And I don't know. Kendrick's line that he said um, that I that popped out the most, that I like the most. Y'all need to move right. Y'all need to get right like the ambulance coming. I was like, you know what? I was like, yep, that goes right with, you know, what Tiz said he likes about bars where, you know, it's right it's there. It's right there. But why but, ain't nobody there yet? Yeah. And then the energy in the video, like he started off like, like he started off marching all cool and shit. And then it, then he, <laughs> then he, um, <laughs> then like he was going like this the whole time. And then, then the beat drop, he's like, nah, fuck that Yo, shit. And then start you? rapping the rap in. Cause that's how he was doing. He was doing like this the whole time, like in the first part. Like in the video. Wait, wait till you see the video. video. You'll know what I'm talking about. He just like, I am the Omega. And then he's like, nah, yeah, nah, y'all fucking with me, man. And then he just go back into the the um the verse again with extra. But this time, you're gonna get weak. He's going, he's swinging his arms like <laughs> on beat and stuff. Like, uh, Kendrick is another animal out there. And that's the guy that I'm really waiting for him to drop soon. So that was a good. That was a good break bet- between the monotony of, you know, what's been going on the past couple of weeks in music, pretty much. Indeed, indeed, indeed. We'll go indeed. into that There's later. There's been a lot going on, though. We definitely going to talk about it. hmm It's funny how this was going to go right into this. But um, next, since we were on, still on music, Fat Joe versus Jaw Rule in a Versus. And... And I thought about this. I was like, you know what? Ja Rule, I'm thinking Ja Rule could sweep Fat Joe. But on the low, I think on Fat, Fat Joe's side, 
he could win. Like he he could win on the low. The way these verses been going, what's the format? Are they on the old school versus format? Like were they just in the studio or something, or are they uh on a stage? Because what I'm gonna say is this on the stage, if Fat Joe come like the locks did and bring it straight to rapping, right? Mm -hmm. He got an advantage because Chess he got that's he go back into that Don Cartagena bag and that bag with uh him and Pun and he got a lot of like lyrical performances that slept on. Um, if they go hit for hit, whoo, mm -hmm. that's where it but, gets sticky because Ja Rule got some bangers, yeah, like he got some definite wins, you know what I'm saying? Like, so baby girl, like, put it on me, yeah, yeah, depending on the song and sent, depending where <laughs> it's placed. Not even depending on where he plays. He got some definite wins. And plus, he's a writer. You know what I'm saying? So he got songs that he didn't even perform that he could put up there. Like, you know what I'm saying? But Fat Joe has, like, more years in the game than Ja Rule. So he has a bigger arsenal. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, And then on the low, he got some sleeper hits. That yeah, you don't even yeah. really think about because he you got the lean saying? back bag, the make it rain bag. The he got some, he got Them some Khaled jumps. He got a couple of Khaled jumps. Yeah, he got, he got, I know he I got one. That song. Heat. I'm gonna tell you, <laughs> like I told me, he got some jumps, man. Uh, and that's like from the 90s on. Some say Khaled, some say Khalid. 10 years down, and I'm finally free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. If you okay. want to, we can supply you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't remember that. Y'all know, man. Head, we, man. We're getting into the Witcher now, man. We got 30 minutes for 11, boy. It's about to be the Witcher now for me. You know, we taking little over. The loopy. What's it at the time? Uh, but yeah, I definitely uh okay. The more we talked about it, the more I could kind of see it. It's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be, gonna be neck and neck. It's gonna be it's neck gonna be and neck for sure. Uh, for I sure. think so. Um, into some fuckery and music to promote his new album. Lil Nas X released his pregnancy pics. All right, moving on. This, <laughs> yeah, that was weird. That hey was man, really um, weird. all right. This is what I'm saying. I blame Boosie. The trolling, <laughs> I get. Okay, we trolling. That's the new thing. Ha ha. He, he. But the effects of that, the conversations mm -hmm. that kids are now having with their parents that they shouldn't probably be having at an earlier age because they're being exposed to something that they don't understand. Mm -hmm. I think that goes into where, like, with great power comes great responsibility. Like, when you have an audience, when you have a platform, the bigger it is, the more responsible you should be to think out your strategies to do, you know, kind of live out the Hippocratic of like, do no harm. Like the most you can do without harming folk. If you can do it without harm and try to do that. Like you don't have to say it in that way or, or put it presented that way or something. Like I, I feel like that's the shock value is, it's cool for the adult audience, but for the kids that, know him and like look at him because Old Town Road was a big song for like a lot of mm -hmm. kids. So he hasn't he gotta realize his audience and kind of read the room and just yeah come on. This I think this is a come new on. this is a new thing for like media on the low because like we really don't have like a I can I don't remember an artist that like was big amongst children in the younger ages or whatever that did wild shit or whatever not to say that it wasn't somebody out there you know what I'm saying but mm -hmm. even though if they did stuff it was like on the low pretty much until the internet <laughs> that's real but, that's real but like Oh man, this is a new, this is something new. 
this is some new territory we're walking into, man. And it's like, I can feel how I feel about it, but somebody's going to feel some type of way about that. So let me just say it. <laughs> let, me, let me just say it. Um, parents, guard, um, guard your children. Just guard your children. Yes. That, that's what I feel. Because yes. this, we're in the wild, wild west of the internet, and they're going to do whatever the fuck they want. Because Lil Nas X is technically still a child. Pretty much. And he, and just like children, they're easy to be influenced or whatever. So I don't know who's around him. Or I don't know if he's making this on his own. Because, you know, some people just want to see the world burn. But wherever it, whoever's making these ideas, he's just going along with it. He just seems to be going along with it with no no consequences. And right. I don't know if this 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 dude was a Lil Nas X lookalike, but it was, I don't know, it was a video I saw on YouTube, and Lil Nas X looked like he was going with some type of, I, it was a girl, it looked like they were like buddy-buddy, pretty much. And then somebody said, look, are you Lil Nas X? Or whatever. And I'm like, and then that post picture, like, if this is really him or whatever, like, that's some split life shit right there. Like, <laughs> seriously, <laughs> seriously, like, 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 are we really looking at a clone? What's going on? This is another good and fuckery conspiracy theory. <laughs> hey, man, this clone stuff is starting to get a little weird. I don't believe it, but the cases they be saying be like, uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's a little, a little different. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, technology is getting really, technology is getting really, really out there. You know, yeah, you you can three D print about anything. And you never know what technology can do right now. We're all in the system. They three D print livers and shit. Yeah, yeah, that's one of the things. That's one of the um, little art things I'd be looking at on Instagram. People be doing the uh, 3D prints of like, you know, actual scenes in the comic book and stuff like that. But yeah, that's how they really do it. That's how it start off. Um, no, they think... 3D print actual organs already. Like, I, I see, I never heard it gone that far they take like, organic tissue and they do it like i, I i'm pretty you go ahead but I, i'm gonna look that up but i i'm pretty sure i read like maybe last year about something like that oh shit that shit's crazy that shit's crazy so if they can do that you know what i'm saying who knows what else can be done oh well. 3D printing human organs with stem cells. Okay, so would they would the only one that's been transplanted is a bladder so far. Uh, but they've already transplanted a bladder. Wait, just wait. I thought I read about something that was transplanted about them organs. So they would so the next thing is uh kidneys, livers, hearts. And no no more no, no more weight. I mean that. No more waiting lists for uh, organs and shit. Like, what you need? Get them shits like at the grocery store. What you What you need? What you need? A heart? What you, What you need? A spleen? I got some spleens over here. Got an extra appendix. What you missing? A gallbladder? Oh, we gotcha. also uh, we also uh, copy pictures and you know we do the mailing all all, all here at Office Max. Yes. <laughs> 3D print your ass phone, 3D print you a gun, you can 3D print anything. I got that. Google Office Max me a goddamn pancreas. <laughs> I'm just saying. They've already oh, got man. the first the first transplant from uh like organic human transplant from this. So the you know, once they're successful, they like, oh, we're gonna let's ramp it up. Oh, We're good yeah. now. It it takes it takes the body takes it. We're good. It's about to be. It's about go. to go down, champ. 
Everybody on the search of a uh, human search for immortality once again, pretty much. When got all the information in the system, pretty much. All part of speaking of systems. The Matrix Resurrection, man. It, the, the trailer's coming out Thursday. And I seen some of that junk. That shit look crazy, nigga. <laughs> I have not it seen like they redoing anything it. yet, but I'm excited for it. It's kind of like they're still doing the same story, but it's like a reboot of the story. And now Neo is John Wick. And it's more, yeah, I'm excited. This is some shit. Oh, <laughs> Neo is John Wick. No, nah, because um, Keanu Reeves still got his long Jesus hair from John Wick. <laughs> And God. then you know, and, and it's, it's the Matrix, Jesus, and, you know, and you know, in the Matrix, he's like cyber Jesus. So you know, mm-hmm. I see where you're going. Yeah. Cyber Jesus. I'm that? definitely excited to see what they do with the story. Um, I didn't really know where you can go with that unless you like reboot the whole thing as if the Matrix has rebooted and he wasn't successful, and then you got a new the one or something. But mm-hmm. I'm interested to see how they what they what they do now. Like, what's the new it, it, it kind of gave me an X Men Days of Futures past feel. Like it, it kind of gave me like like they're gonna uh, have to go back in time. Like, all right, the Matrix reality is like a is like a sickness, like COVID, and they're treating it with one of the the, the pill that you pick when you just want a regular life, or the pill versus the pill that the you know, sent you to a major, the blue pill, pretty much. The way they did it in the trailer. So, yeah, it looks like, almost like, hmm, they're going on the big pharma scare on this one. This might be a stretch. Okay. This might be a stretch. I'd be be interested in that, though. Like I said, I'm just interested to see what what new angle they take on the story period. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm open. And to then it. I'm here for it. And at a you know at a caveman primitive low level Padawan shit, I want to see that nigga fight because the Matrix have been having some of the greatest, closest to live action J- Dragon Ball Z fights we've been seeing for a while. Like, we're in that one scene where he's like in the um, he's like in the alley, uh basketball court and he's fighting all the um andersons and stuff like that all yes at once. yes when he was uh fighting like the million it was like the million anderson march yeah <laughs> yeah yeah i definitely remember that yeah i was swinging around and stuff I'm like this is the dopest shit ever <laughs> oh, it was pretty cool it was pretty damn cool this is me. I want all movies to look like the fifth element in the Matrix. I don't know about that. I, Not, I would say um, this I do like certain aesthetics expression. of it, but I don't know about do I want all of them. Not, not all movies, but I'm I'm just saying how be a lot of shit going on. Like how uh, addicted to sci-fi and that cyberpunk movie type or whatever. I just want to see what the future looks like. That's why I'm addicted to it. Futurist. Tony That's Starks. Real. That's real. Mm. I can respect it. All right. So let's get into the stupid fuckery. I mean, even yeah, let's let's get right into it. Well, this is dude or whatever. He is a conservative. This is a black guy. He's running for the governor of California. Larry Elder. Right? Yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. Candace Owens. Coon Rocket, so, go. Coon Rocket. Yes, yes, yes. I brought this up just so you can say that. That's it. That's the only reason why I brought this up. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> just yeah. So you Big can say Coon that. Rocket energy over there, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Um, All right. Logic and common decency. Larry uh, Elder White Man. That's what he talks like. What benefit do you get out of it other than having the white man's hand up your ass so you can, like a puppet, so you can say it? Coon rocket, go! Coon rocket! 
Like, I just don't see. And then the only thing, the only reason why I even know about this person is because he said that outlandish shit on Candace Owens. No, so other than that, he had a, uh, I want to say he had a TV show back in the day, man. Like in the 90s, early 2000s. Yeah, I want to say it was like one of them fake judge shows or something like that. One of them type jumps where he would like do cases, but it wasn't an actual court, but it was like a court. You know, them fake judge shows. You know what? California, man, and their history is like a lot from the streets. So I'm going to get you. I'm going to make sure I I give justice to the people. Next on Judge Elder. That type of shit. Yeah. Yeah. Roommates fighting over over spaghetti spilled in a TV and dumb shit. (laughs) You know, just random shit, you know. Yeah. Ain't ain't, ain't, ain't helping nobody in the community with it. Just dumbass conversation. Man, California kind of got a like a long history of just random people that had shows. And but movies, you know what's weird about California? It's politicians. But it kind of fits because it's California. California has the weirdest politicians. But they keep on passing legislation, legislation that helps the black people over there. So I'm gonna tell them to keep on doing this shit. Cause they done showed up on the on the positive black news a few times, so I'm rocking yeah, with California right now. I have nothing bad to say about them, but keep going. I don't, I don't think I. Have but do, but if y'all, if y'all if y'all let this Negro here, this That's cool rocket, just bringing it up. If you let this cool rocket blast off, I swear for God, y'all will <laughs> never hear from me again. Don't you do it, California? We don't need no Herman Cain wanna be. Mm-mm. That's that's what it is. The resurrection. Nah, nah, nah. Makes no sense. But that's this week's good and fuckery. Coon Rocket. Coon Rocket, go. Coon Rocket. <laughs> I brought this up just so he could say that. I swear to God. Hey, I man, I'm going to get the people what they want, man. I'm going to get the people <laughs> what they need. And um, go ahead. Yeah, come on with it. Some somebody else that probably is cool with Larry Elder, who also had a show, is guy caught up in the news again for some reason because he's 33% Apache, and because Eminem raps, he feels like he could say the N-word. I'm talking about Tecumseh. Dog, the, <laughs> I don't know if he put Diggy Burgers, but it's Dog the Bounty Hunter. But oh hell. <laughs> Hey, you said 30% Apache. I was like, you done found the real Tecumseh? Oh, shit. I might have. Well, I was about but, to um, my shit. No, nah, man. I'm about to be uh, the funniest shit ever. I saw this, and then I seen, uh, I seen him get brought up on Dark the other day again. But I seen it on a separate video. What, what dog done did now? You call somebody It was nigga? like some old like audio of him telling his son, that he can't have a black girlfriend because he says the N word, but he does that doesn't say the N word like a racist, and he don't want his business to be falling down because of a racial slur. Isn't this because old? if you hear it, mm-hmm. it is. But it, for some, why are reason, they bringing it back up? That's the weird thing about it. It just popped right back up. What is he? And what has he done recently that got this popping again? Cause I'm like I thought we had a uh, I thought we had left them in the in the archives of the TLC TV show Nut Jobs that uh no longer are around that we I had kind of put in that a, trunk I, and tucked away in that. I want to say that he got into an interview and he brought it back up, and the interviewer um brought up that situation. Or whatever, and then, Got it. yeah, he just from there just brought up whatever random he excuse he can because he got hit on the hot spot, pretty much. Hit on the hot spot. Pause. Pause. All of that, but yeah, I got you. I, I'm with you though. Overall, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm definitely with you. I got you. So, this is what we call the segue segment. <laughs> 
of the good and fuckery. Um, I love this fuckery because it's just hilarious, man. Chris Brown called Ye a whole ho for leaving his first off for new again, and then he released it. <laughs> that's not that's not all. A lot of people is mad at Ye. Uh, <laughs> Soldier Boy released his down the verse, and you know, let me tell you something. <clears throat> I'm not the one to always say that Soulja Boy is the greatest rapper in the world, but that had to be one of the best Soulja Boy raps I've ever heard in my life. And I understand why he's mad because that is the best verse I've ever heard from Soulja Boy. Now like, I gotta go like, look up this verse. I didn't even pay yeah, like to this... him dude that was mad and I just was like, oh yeah, he always <laughs> mad. Yeah, and in 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 pure soldier boy fashion, in his anger, he challenged Ye into a boxing match. But yeah, if oh. you if you gave someone one of the best verses of your life, I think that's the kind of yeah, that's the kind of spirit you would probably be in if your shit got cut. But I can't argue I think, that. <clears throat> I think Ye is hiding on behind the fact that. I think this is why Ye brought up the fact that um, Universal dropped Donda before he said go, pretty much, because he wanted to drop it during Drake or whatever. So Well, he missed that boat. <clears throat> yeah, he missed that boat and a couple other boats. But <laughs> within that, we also have Drake releasing Andre 3000's Donda verse. And like in great Andre 3000 fashion, he makes an awesome verse. But he said that he didn't realize that Donda was like supposed to be, I don't want to say censored, but have a mild tone as far as like, you know, vulgarities and stuff like that. Right. So he, he, he didn't feel right saying his verse, but his verse was also about his mother that passed and relating it to Kaye. The problem with the song is that Ye's verse is a diss to Drake. And it just, it just don't match. It's not the verse that I was expecting after the fact that Andre say that. Now, mind you, I, I like, I like the battle. Like, you know, I just like the battle. Tis, we know that you love the battle because you consecutively keep track of battle rap pretty much. This is how you are the reason why I know as much as I can know now about the battle rappers now because I've been so out of touch about it. But even though I like hearing this, is, this isn't that just it just wasn't the time and place in the song for that pretty much. You could have kept that as a separate verse or whatever, but um, Andre said he didn't know about that verse. He heard something else before that, so it just felt like I guess Kanye was in his feelings about all this stuff, and then he just put out that verse along with it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> mm -hmm. That makes but, sense. That sounds yeah. about like Kanye. Everything has been like subliminal tactics behind the whole thing. It's a lot of covert operation. Pretty much. So, yeah, and and being that, I would say, I felt like deals with good subjects brought up to end the good and fuckery off with. To go I think right they into were it. amazing topics. Um, <laughs> because my topic for this week is actually 